Hi, my name is Pamela Pipes. I'm the program developer at the Graduate Student Center here at Sal Ross State University. And in today's video tutorial, I'd like to talk to you about how you insert a landscape page into your thesis. Say you've got a figure or a table that, uh, in order for it to be legible, really needs to be placed in landscape mode in your thesis. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing that you need to do is isolate the page that you would like to convert to landscape orientation by inserting section breaks above and below it. So go to the page immediately preceding the page that you want to convert to landscape orientation. Place your cursor at the bottom and then go to page layout tab, breaks, next page, section break. Sometimes that adds an extra space. If you don't want it there, you can delete it. You then need to go to the bottom of the page that you'd like to convert to landscape orientation and do the same thing. So go to the bottom, go to page layout tab, breaks, section breaks, next page. Again, if an extra line shows up, you can delete it. Okay, now we have uh, this page, in this example, page number 15, that has been isolated from the page before it and the page after it as its own section. So we should be able to apply formatting to just this section and it won't affect the rest of the document. So, for the next thing we're going to do, we're going to convert this page to landscape. So put your cursor on the page that you want to convert and go to, again, to the page layout tab and call out this page setup window. You'll notice that you can see your margins, the page orientation, and right now it's in portrait and notice your margins. These are how your margins should be set for your thesis. One inch top, one inch bottom, one inch right, and one and a half inches on the left. Uh, the reason you have a one and a half inch margin on the left is because that's the binding edge uh, and they require an extra half inch on that binding edge to actually perform the binding. So uh, the binding edge is one and a half inches and in the portrait pages that binding edge is the left edge. But keep in mind that on a landscape page your binding edge is the top edge so when you switch to landscape you need the top margin to be one and a half and the rest to be one. Fortunately in Word it automatically switches it for you so when you click landscape you notice that the top margin is now one and a half inches and that's exactly the way we want it. When you convert a page to landscape you just may want to check to make sure that it's actually done this for you. If it hasn't you'll need to adjust the margin so that the top margin is one and a half inch and the rest are one. Also notice that it applies this landscape format to just this section which is what we want. We don't want the pages above and below this particular page to be landscape, just this one page. So click OK. And you notice that page 15 is now in landscape, but we've also now inserted an extra page here in landscape mode that you may or may not want. If you had another figure that you needed to place uh, that needed to be in landscape mode, you could leave that page just the way it is. If you didn't, you could just delete, delete until that extra page went away. So, now we have our page 15 in landscape mode and can make full use of the space by enlarging our figure. One thing to keep in mind when you're enlarging a figure or placing a figure or a table is that you must not enlarge that figure to the point that it exceeds your margins. Now, if you don't know if it's ex exceeded your margins, what you can do is go to the View tab and click the ruler box that will bring up your ruler that shows your margins. This blue section at either end here in the ruler is your margin area and you cannot encroach upon that. So as you're enlarging your figure just make sure that you don't overstep those bounds. Okay now again when I enlarge that figure 
it created another landscape page down here, which I could get rid of by just deleting. But uh, I want to keep that page uh, for now because I'm, I'm going to be using it uh, in an example here in just a minute. So we'll leave that like it is. Now you'll notice that the page numbers are located in the upper right hand corner, which is where they are in the section above and below. But we need to move that page number to the bottom right and it needs to be flipped on its side 180 degrees so that when this page is rotated 180 degrees, the page number is in the proper orientation and matches the uh, other pages which are in portrait mode. So how do we do that? Well, we need to delete this page number in this header. But before we do that, we need to unlink this new landscape section from the previous section. Otherwise, when we delete this page number, it will also disappear in your previous section. So you double click in the header section, and you notice that on the header and footer tools design tab, there's a link to previous option that is highlighted. You want to make sure that you unclick that. This is the, the default is that it be linked, but you want to unlink it. So click unlink. And you need to do the same thing in the footer. You also need to go down to the portrait section following your landscape section and unlink that se section from previous in both the header and the footer. Now what we have is this two-page landscape section which is completely isolated from the sections above it and below it so that what we do now on these pages won't affect the other pages in the document. So highlight the page number and delete it. And you notice when you do something on one, any one page in the section, it applies it to all the other pages in the section. But because we've isolated this section from the other sections in the document, it did not delete it in the section before it or after it, which is exactly how we wanted it to work. So now we've gotten rid of the page numbers that were in the locations uh, that we didn't want. We need to place them in the correct location. So get out of the header and footer. and go to insert tab text box draw text box and draw a text box uh, down in the bottom right hand corner it doesn't have to be exactly placed because we're going to do that in a minute or sized because we'll take care of that too so just draw a text box now once you've drawn the box your text box tools bar shows up up here in the top and on the far right, you have this size option where you can manipulate the size of the box. And what we want this box to be is two inches tall by one inch wide. Then you want to move the box to be exactly flush with the right bottom right corner, like so. Now we also want to get rid of this outline, the default outline for this text box. And you do that by going to this shape outline drop down box on the text box tools bar and selecting no outline and that will remove that black line around your text box. Now place your cursor inside the text box and type your page number and on this page it's 15. You notice it is running in the wrong direction. This is reading from left to right but we need it to read from top to bottom so we need to change its orientation, the text direction. And you do that by going up here to the text box tools bar and clicking this text direction option here once. And it rotates it 180 degrees to the right. So now we have it going in the right direction. We need to place it in the right position. Put your cursor at the beginning of the page number and then leave text box tools and go to the home tab. Center that page number by selecting the middle align button here in the paragraph section of the home bar. And then moving the page number to the left, two lines. 
If you're in single space mode, you need to hit enter twice. If you're in double space mode, just once. But basically the equivalent of two single space lines down in s inside the text box. Okay, now the page number is where it should be, or at least we believe pretty close to where it should be. If you want to check the position and make sure that it's exactly placed, you could print this page and the, pre the page immediately preceding it and uh, stack them on one on top of the other, put them up to a bright light, and see if 14 and 15 are aligned to your liking. If they're not, you can go back to your document and again select the text box. And you can fine tune this position by using the up, down, left, right arrows. You can move this box incrementally. So say I needed to move it a little bit uh, up. So I use my up arrow and tab up a little bit. Then I could print again and stack the two pages on one on top of the other and check the uh, position and readjust if necessary until I got it right. Now, um, we have this second landscape page down here, and I left this in place because I wanted to show you um, how you could save yourself from repeating all these steps every time you had a landscape page. Once you do this once, you can just copy this text box and paste it onto your other landscape pages. So make sure you've got the text box selected, and then copy it, and go to your other landscape page or pages, and paste it and it will p place the text box close to where you need it. You'll usually need to move it around a bit. And then all you'll need to do is uh, select the text inside the text box and adjust the page number. So now you see we have two pages in this landscape section. They're both numbered. They're both in the correct location so that when the document is printed and these landscape pages are rotated up into the portrait orientation, the page numbers will be where they're supposed to be. But uh, some things that you need to keep in mind. If uh, at some point in your edits you add a page into a section above the landscape section, I'll show you an example here. Say we add a page. The page number is going to advance automatically for you here in these sections. But in the landscape section where you've manually placed your numbers, these will not automatically uh, increase or decrease as you add and remove pages. So uh, you'll need to go in and automatically change them. This would be page 16 now, and the following page would be page 17. You notice that in this section below the landscape uh, section, the page numbers have advanced as they were supposed to. But sometimes, depending on how you've set up your sections, uh, sometimes this might start over uh, numbering at page one and you didn't mean it to. Um, what you can do to fix that, if this was not 18 and it needed to be, you can fix that by double clicking in the header section of that section. And under the header footer tools, select page number, format page numbers, and tell it to start at whatever page number is appropriate for this page. Uh, 18 is correct, but let's say it actually needed to be page 19. Now this page number is 19, and all the pages after it in the section are numbered sequentially from there. So that is how you insert a landscape page into your thesis and place the numbers appropriately. If you're trying this at home and you're having some difficulty, I'd be happy to help you one-on-one. -on -one. You can come by and see me at the Graduate Student Center. I'm located in the Briscoe Administration Building, room 104. If you'd like to give me a call and set up an appointment, uh, that'd be good too. Call me at 432-837. 8247. Again, that phone number is 432-837-8247. I look forward to hearing from you and helping you with that thesis.